everyone, I'm back with another video. Um, we're in a new space. I thought that the light would be better here because there's a skylight right there. And I hope the sound will be better too, filming on my phone, not my computer. And hoping that this is a little bit easier for you guys to watch. We're gonna do the second most popular sequence that I teach, which is still deep stretch, but it's gonna be shoulders, neck, arms, and upper back. Um, usually when I teach this class, I talk a lot about how all of these postures, or at least a lot of these postures, will help with migraines, um, if you get them, or tension headaches, and is really, really good for anyone who spends most of their time kind of hunched at a computer, or looking down at their kids, or any type of down, we're going to do a lot of up. So, let's get started. Go ahead and find yourself in a comfy seated position. Make sure that your phone is on silent. Make sure that no one's gonna bug ya. Close the door if there's a door. Put your kids to bed. Get ready for a little bit of me time. So, comfy seated position. Find your sit bones. You can find them by wiggling back and forth or by pulling the fleshy part of your bum away. Then, once you feel nice and grounded, allow your eyes to close down, allow your sit bones to get really heavy, feel or imagine them rooting down into the earth, just like a tree. As the roots go down, the tree can get taller, you get long in the side body, you get more space between each of your vertebrae, every inhale makes you a little bit taller, every exhale relax shoulders. Inhale to get taller. Exhale to relax the shoulders. This time inhale to get taller from the shoulder to the crown of the head. So keeping the chin level, relax the shoulders on the exhale. One more inhale. And one more exhale. Keeping the eyes closed, allow yourself total complete permission to be here for the next however long and give yourself permission to have this time for you and to let it mentally be your time as well. There's nothing else you need to think about. No one else you need to take care of. Nothing you need to plan or prepare for. All you need to do is just be with your body. So to get grounded and centered, which is really important in any time of crisis, but even more so probably now, Allow yourself to have the image, again, of being grounded with roots into the earth. Let the roots get deep and wide. Let them connect to other roots. You can imagine all of the people in your life being connected to them. Your partner, your kids, your friends people you know and see all the time, other people in our kinky family, other yogis, other people in the community, other people in the state. Your roots are growing wider and deeper, feeling grounded and more connected to everyone in our country. Again, roots growing deeper and wider Ocean can't stop them, being connected to people in other parts of the world. And then finally, roots connecting to literally everyone. Big inhale into the belly, into the chest. One more breath into the belly, into the chest. remembering that here, even though we're at home and we're not with other people, that may be our family, that we are never alone, there's always connection available to us, like through YouTube, which is pretty cool. We're going to start with our shoulder drop. You guys who come to my class know and love this. We're going to squeeze our shoulders up to our ears, make a fist, clench our jaw, squish up our face, and then on the exhale, drop everything, breathe out the mouth like a dragon. It'll look like this. And it feels so good. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. 
Exhale. <sighs> Inhale. Exhale. <sighs> Inhale. Exhale. <sighs> Inhale. Exhale. <sighs> Inhale. Exhale. <sighs> Last one. Inhale. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale. Drop. Relax. Let all the tension flow out. Ooh, I get a little lightheaded. We just oxygenated the blood, which is great to do before we get moving. Also helps our body protect itself from getting hurt. When we've got oxygen in the body, we're more stretchy, which is awesome. We're gonna go into arms next. Have the arms out to the side. Let this alone be a stretch. Feel strings through your arms until I'm tugging your fingertips as far away from you as you can, as you can do it. Flip the palms up. And then as long as your breath is, your hands will go up. So take a long, deep inhale. Let the hands travel up as the breath gets to the top. And when you do get to the top, flip the arms, squeegee your personal space. I love to imagine just getting all that gunk that I'm thinking about off my plate here. Flip up again, slow inhale, slow exhales, big, long inhale. When we get to the top, flip to your left and come down for a twist. One arm in the front, one arm in the back for a little bit more. Let your gaze go behind you and look back at that left hand. Big breaths here. When we're in a twist, we're very um, detoxing to all of our organs. So the deeper you breathe, the more you will feel the detox, the more your body will get to metabolize all the yoga. One more inhale. And then on the exhale, exhale all the breath out and then exhale a little bit more, get that stagnant breath out. Inhale, slow and controlled back up to the top. And exhale, twist to the right this time. Left hand in front, right hand in back. Look back at that right hand for the full twist if you want it. Tummies are tight, but breath is still breathing. Nice and deep here. Again, the deeper the breath, the more your body can soak up all of your yoga. One more here. Big inhale. Full exhale. The inhale to come back up. And then we squeegee down one more time. Awesome. Going on to the spine next. Hands will come on the knees just to give us something to hold on to. Hearts are gonna come forward on an inhale and make a huge circle, hips are grounded. Exhaling to the back, inhaling to the front. It's gonna feel a little bit like cat cows are in circles instead of front and back. So again, inhaling to the front and exhaling to the back. I'm talking a lot, but you guys are breathing. Inhaling to the front and exhaling to the back, flip your circle. Go to the left now, inhaling to the front, and exhaling to the back. Warming up our spinal fluid. It stops moving for some reason around the age of 21, and that's silly because we still need our spine. So we have to move the fluid ourselves. One last time, inhale to the front, and exhale to the back. Awesome. Couple of shoulder rolls back, nothing fancy. Just getting the shoulders warmed up. We wanna make sure our upper body is nice and loose. And now we're gonna go on to the neck. So just like we talk about in class, our perfect yogi posture, we want to have that really good posture along the spine, inhaling to press the crown up against the head, chin is level, not up. And then shoulders relax. And now we'll go into the neck. We don't wanna go into the neck with bad posture or it's just gonna make everything worse. So good posture, let the head fall to the side. This is going to my right, right hand on top. If you want, just the weight of the hand is enough. No pulling, just the weight. And if not, you can just use gravity here. It's perfectly okay. Deep breaths, keep this left shoulder grounded. Big inhale and big exhales if you want to be extra. Have the hand. Remove the hand, inhale back up, and exhale to the other side. Take the hand if you want it. Left hand on top this time. Right shoulder relaxed. Posture still good, not getting crunchy. 
Thread the breathing. Inhale and exhale. The bigger the breath, the better the yoga. Inhale and exhale. Next inhale brings us out. Then we're going to go chin to chest. Just let the chin fall if you want. Hand comes on the back. Again, just the weight of the hand, not pulling. Big breaths here, shoulders are relaxed. Don't let them come with you. Keep them back. One more breath. <sighs> Inhale brings us back. And then we're gonna go chin to the sky for longer than we did chin to the chest. So let the chin come up, shoulders relaxed. Hand comes here if you want, not pulling and pushing, just the gravity. And we'll stay here for longer because we spend so much of our time texting, looking down on the computer that we want to have the opposite motion. We want to make sure that we're stretching the front of our neck and chest, which is what we'll be doing a lot in class today. So keep breathing. I'm going to take you to have two more breaths here. Last one. blankets if you have them. If you don't have a blanket, that's okay. You don't need one, but it does feel nice to have a blanket underneath the knee here. So come on in to hero's pose or rock pose, whatever you want to call it. Tuck the toes underneath and we're going to have hands on the hips, tuck in the tummy and sit onto the heels. At first it feels like nothing, but you guys who know, you know, it's going to get real hot on the bottoms of those feet. We're stretching the bottoms of the feet and the backs of the calves. So just enjoy for a couple of breaths. It's probably getting hot now. Breathe into the discomfort. That can really be the motto for life, especially now. Just breathe into that discomfort. <sighs> the key is to never stop the breath. One more breath here. Ooh, I'm feeling it. And inhale to come out. Hands come down, tap the toes. Oh, yeah. Sit on back now just for normal hero's pose. Hands are going to come behind us. Clasp them. And you're looking forward. I'm just looking at you. Let the arms come back. Have the shoulder blades kissing in the back right here. And if this is enough, this can be enough. If you want a little bit more slowly and controlled, Take the hands away from the bum. Be very gentle with your shoulders. Some people have really flexy shoulders and some people don't, and that's okay. I'm not one of those people. I've got really tight shoulders. So shoulder blades together and back. If you want more, come up onto the knee, let the crown of the head touch the mat and bring the arms away and look like this. Take some deep breaths wherever you are. We've got two more. If you go for the deep variation, you decide it doesn't feel good, that's fine. We're here. One more breath. Awesome. Let the arms come out. Give yourself some wrist rolls. We're going to go into cat cow. When we go and put weight on our hands, we want hands to be starfished out, fingers to be starfished out. And then we're going to claw into the mat keeping all the finger rounds down. That's gonna protect our wrists, especially if you have carpal tunnel, anything like that. Make sure you're clawing, keeping the wrists happy. Hands are as wide as the shoulder blades. Toes are tucked. We're gonna come into cat and cow on the inhale. Tailbone goes up, heart comes down between the elbows and chin goes up to the sky. Still pressing in those hands, still clawing. Exhaling to round the back, chin comes to the chest, tailbone tucks under. Inhale for the cow. Exhale for the cat. Moving with your breath here, get it at least 10. Pushing through those shoulders into the ground. And then sinking into them. Inhaling and exhaling. Also, we're doing spinal fluid. 
warming up the pelvic region, warming up the shoulders, warming up the neck. This is one of those postures you should do every, every, every day. Get in about two more. Awesome. Back in the tabletop. Hands still as wide as the shoulders, clawing into the mat. Let the right hand come in just a little bit. Lift the left hand up. Again, just this being a stretch alone, fingertip to fingertip. Grab something like a peach or success or joy. <laughs> Reach for it. And then grab it and put it underneath. Lay your shoulder down on the mat, not on the blanket. Forward twist. When you're there, right hand can twist over the body if you want a little bit deeper of a stretch. It looks like this. Into this crease here. Start to unwind. Use the right hand as a kickstand to help you come back out. This time, left hand comes in a little bit. Big inhale, reaching the right to the sky. Grab that thing. Pull it on through underneath. Right shoulder on the ground. Palm comes up. If you want, take the left hand, wrap it around, tuck it in the right thigh crease. That just deepens the stretch a little bit. Good, tuck and twist. Keep breathing. Again, breathe deeper in those twists. Tuck the tummy in. Knees are kind of pulling, hugging to the midline here. Hugging towards each other just helps you have a good foundation. One more breath. <sighs> Start to come out. Awesome. Hands back towards the front. Knees apart if you want to stretch the hips. Knees together if you want to stretch the low back. Pull them up to you. Press the hands back. Go back for your child's pose. Forehead on the mat or the blanket. Hand out to the front. All the way down. I'm going to come out so you can still hear me. Use your hands to press yourself back. If your blanket's in the way, feel free to take it out. Push yourself back. Again, elbows are active here. Feeling the stretch through the armpits. Pushing yourself back to your bum, either hips open or hips down, or hips together, head down. <sighs> Great time to check in with your body. How does it feel? How are you feeling? If you haven't let yourself feel how you are feeling, please do. It's not good to keep that stuff in. We gotta get it out, so check in. Take a pause, and when you're not feeling good, remember, you are not alone. You're always connected. One more breath here. <sighs> Inhale to come back up. Hands are as wide as the mat. Start pushed out, clawed in, ready to go. Tuck the toes, press up for a downward dog. Relax the heels. Pushing through the hands, melt the heart, plug in the shoulders, let the heart come back to the knee. Toes and legs are pulling together to the midline, so are the arms. Heart is melting, look up at the belly button. Awesome. Let the weights come into the left foot, lift the right up, toes pointing down, heels pointing up. Relax that left heel, it always wants to come up. Open the hips if you want it. And if you guys are a little bit deeper in your practice, you want to flip your dog, this is where you flip your dog. Go for the nice big stretch. And if you're not flipping, that's cool. Stay right here. Awesome. Let that foot come back down. Weight goes into the right foot now. Lift the left up, still pushing evenly through the hands. Heel up, toes down. Relax the right heel, melting the heart, open the hips. If you want, flip your dog. I'm not going to because I'm going to knock over all my books. 
but go for it if you want. Still pressing evenly through these hands. One more breath. <sighs> hands come down, sorry, foot comes down, hands are already down. Let the knees come down and grab your blocks or books are great if you don't have blocks. I have blocks and books, but I'm gonna use my blocks just because I have them. But if you don't, then take a nice, ooh, take a nice thick book like Harry Potter and let it be your block, works great. So choose your flavor. Take the blocks, if you are not very flexy, low like this. If you're very flexible in your back, then come on up like this. We're gonna come into puppy pose. I'll go to the medium. You can also do this on the mat without blocks if you would like. Uh, knees are hip distance apart. Forearms are gonna come onto the blocks and then you're gonna press back and let your forehead relax through the arm. It's gonna look like this. If it's not deep enough, Go for the taller blocks or walk the knees back. So get into your puppy pose. Let the shoulder blades come together in the back. And then if you want, walk it back, melting the heart here. If you are still feeling like it's not enough, only my very flexy friends, let your chin come onto the mat instead of your forehead will look like this. more breaths wherever you are. Melting that tension. Start to come out on the inhale just by sitting back into that child pose. Hands are going to crawl all the way over to the left. Give yourself a nice side stretch right fingertip all the way to right toe, big, long arch. I'll show you on this side. Big, long arch. Keep the hips grounded. Keep the bum down by the feet. Inhale to come back to the center. Stay here for the exhale. Stay there for one more inhale and one more exhale. There's no rest. And then inhale to come on over to the other side. Hands crawling all the way over to the right. Feeling the stretch from left fingertip to left toe. Using your hands to press back if you want. Awesome. <sighs> inhale back to the center. Stay here for the exhale. Then plant the hands, tuck the toes, get onto the bottoms of your feet, and let yourself be here in a really bent forward fold. Come down the very bent knees, just hang. Awesome. If you are working on your forward fold, then it feels really great to come down with bent knees. It will help you unlock these hamstrings and the low back. And then slowly start to straighten the legs. Let the hands come on the calves or on the thighs, but not on the knees, and press forward for a flat back, facing down, feeling that string, pull the back and elongate it, and then exhale to fold one more time. Another great tip, since we have books here, to work on your forward fold, you can also use a block. Oh, there it is. But a book works great. It's to stand on your book, thank you Harry Potter, and to let your heels come off the back. And that will give you even more of a stretch here. Tummies are in, hands are wherever they want to be. We have blocks if we want them. Ooh, relax those heels. Feels really good if you have a book with you. Ooh. All right, if you have a book, remove your book. Bend your knees again and slowly roll up vertebrae by vertebrae, starting with the tailbone and then the next vertebrae, and then the next vertebrae, and then the next vertebrae. So slowly that it's kind of annoying. Go so slow, you want to stretch out all of that back space. And then when we come up, we'll go 
our hands involved, get them up to the sky, full stretch, tips to toes, oh, yes, and then relax the shoulders, come on over to the left, big side stretch here, if you want, you can be in prayer hands, or you can be crossed, inhale to the front, or to the top, exhale to the other side, big breaths here, when we do the side stretches, we drain the lymph nodes, and the armpits and all of this junk where we hold a lot of stress and a lot of sickness so get that out we don't need it oh so good mm. awesome come on back up we're going to come into a wide legged stretch bring your blocks just for fun we can be as wide as we want. If we want to be here, that's great. If you want to be wider, that's great. If you want to be closer together, that's fine. You need to do what feels right for your body. When we are doing our wide-legged stretches, it's okay if our toes are out just a little bit. We want to have the action of hugging our legs together. And when you do it, when you hug them together, you'll feel all of your inner thighs um, light up and really get active. And that's what we want here. So get yourself here, get yourself um, activated. Bring the toes up, that will also activate all the lower leg. And then have the hands behind us, shoulder blades in the back, come down, heart to heart. Top of the head goes down, relax the toes. Keeping the arms away from the bum. When the arms get tired, let them relax and come into your forward fold. Hands can touch the ground, hands can be on blocks, hands can be on legs all are good to go and here is also where you can decide if you need to widen or tighten your stance so do what you need to do big breath wherever you are <sighs> inhale place the hands either on the ground or on your blocks if you need to come on up halfway again elongating the spine looking down having that l position only our legs are apart this time and then, when we feel really long and tall, bow one more time. And if you can here, for my flexi friends, you can rest the very crown of your head on the ground. If you want. Inhale to come on over to your right leg. Hands can be on the foot, hands can be on a block, hands can be on the ground. Let the left hand get grounded wherever you want it to be. I'll show you the block so you can see. Again, grounding, clawing, having that good posture here. And then take the right hand and lift it up for a twist. You're gonna feel that twist in the upper back. Breathe into that discomfort. Look up at the right hand. Again, legs pulling together. Activating the legs. One more. Exhale and inhale to unwind. Come on back to the middle. One breath here, one breath out. Crawl to the left. Bring your block so it's ready. Just enjoying the hamstring stretch first. Inhales and exhales super deep. Right hand gets on the block or on the ground, up to you. Left hand comes up to the sky, or here, or we're here. Look up at those left fingers, stretch them again like before. Grab for that thing, get it. It's just up there. Big inhales and exhales, legs magneting together underneath us. <sighs> Start to release. Come on down, last time in the center in the forward fold. <sighs> All right, start to come up a little bit and heel toe the feet in. So they're a little more than hip distance apart. Keep your blocks handy. We're gonna sit down into our yogi squat. For me, it's hard to come down with heels down. And for some people, heels down is not an option. If that's you, get your block ready. You can place it right behind you. You can sit on it. 
for my friends who want to try, it blocks me up in front to help us. It helps me to put my hands out and to sit into my yogi squat. It just gives me something to balance against. Once I'm there and I feel good, then hands come to heart, elbows and knees are friends here, never elbowing out, always having that equal action, again, hugging to that middle, and then elbows just gently pressing against. So there's sort of a little bit of balance here. Hands come to the heart and then open that heart. Get tall, feel the strings still pulling you up. Don't get crunchy into your yogi squat. Just be nice and tall. One more breath. And we sit. Very nice. You guys are doing great. So here we come next into a single legged stretch. Let me get my Harry Potter out of here. So I will do it sideways just because I like to have my legs on the mat and not on the ground. We're going to let one knee be up. Right now my left knee is up, right knee is straight. And we're going to let this left leg be on the inside. It can be down for now. We're going to go for a single leg stretch. So let the arms come up and then bow over. Heart always coming down first. What we want is heart and knee to be friends, not necessarily hands on the feet. And if hands do reach the feet, never pulling, just having them there because it feels nice. Hands can be on the calves. Hands can also be on blocks if we're getting tired perfectly okay. Heart relaxing towards that knee, still keeping the chest open, shoulders relaxed. And then we're here for a few breaths. Tummies are in, and if we want, we can rest. <sighs> These toes are pulling back, pinky toe coming back towards this knee, really active like it's up against the wall. on the inside of the left knee. If we want, we can just take a pseudo measure here and we look back at these right fingers here. Or just directly behind us, which is my front door. Maybe my front door. Tummies are tucked. Hearts are open. Breathing is still happening here. Even in the twist, it's hard to breathe in the twist. That's why you need to breathe extra deep. So keep it going. We'll do one more breath here. Start to unwind. On the inhale, feet come straight. If you want, you can always sit on a block, a blanket, during a forward fold. Totally okay. There's the, that's what it looks like if you want to try it. Hands go up. And this time we exhale, both hands down, both feet down, all toes pulling back towards us. Tummies are in, hearts are relaxing towards the knees, but shoulders are also relaxing, not getting slouchy, keeping it good. And breathe. For my very flexy people, you can put a block behind you. I'm not there yet, but if you are, you can, and you can grab on the outside of your block. If not, grab your feet or just relax. And for my tired friends, you can relax on the blocks on the side or up. One more breath because it feels so delicious. Okay, start to relax. This time, 
right leg is out. Sorry, right leg is bent. Left leg is out. If we want, we come off the blanket or on, doesn't matter. Either way, it's nice. If you have low back problems, definitely sit on that blanket. It's gonna feel nice. Hands come up. Oh, don't hit the water. Hands come up. Hearts are open. Shoulders are relaxed. See how I do that? Shoulders up, shoulders relaxed. Let the heart come down first. Coming down to this foot. Again, if you want me to flex the heels, you can put the block on the outside. On this side, I can't do it. But on the other, not so much. <clears throat> and enjoy. Toes still pulling back. Heart coming down. If you want to rest, block can make a little pillow for us here. <sighs> and take some deep breaths. Again, checking in with ourselves. How are we doing? How are you doing? <sighs> it's okay if it's not good. It's okay if it's hard. It's okay if it is good too. It's all okay. One more breath. <sighs> or I guess it's yogi to say it all just is. Start to come out. The right knee comes up. Right foot comes over. Hug in this knee into the chest. Right elbow comes on the inside of the right knee. Hips are still grounded here. Left hand comes up and over. We look at that hand or we look right behind us. Chest is open. This is what we're doing. Make the manger if you want it. Or make a little bowl. Or make spirit fingers. Whatever makes you happy. Feel that twist in the upper back. The least flexible part of our spine. This is why we're stretching it. It's also why I get so tense up there. <sighs> One last breath. We start to unwind. Ooh, yeah. All right. We're gonna come into a figure four stretch. My peeps in class know this one. Make your right foot bent over the left so you have the four. Looks like that. Four. And hands are going to come behind us, fingertips behind, shoulder blades kissing in the back, hearts open. Let this foot come up and here we are. These toes, right toes are active. Looking forward, I'm looking at you, but you're looking forward. If you want to deepen the stretch just in the hamstring and this right hip, bring the toes closer. If you're like, no, I want that shoulder stretch. I've been in that class before. I know what it feels like. Then pick up your bum and put it closer to your foot and feel the stretch right here. Hearts are open, shoulder blades together for the whole thing. Chin comes up. Oh, it feels really good. Inhale in the nose, exhale out the mouth like a dragon. It's amazing. Get that tension out. This is also great to do if you are going to give a speech or have a hard talk or you want to do something really creative but you feel blocked get that throat open <sighs> one more toes are still active hands are flat into the mat and start to unwind bring the neck up first bring the bum close let the foot come down let the hands come down Ooh, shoulder roll, flick the hands, shake, shake, shake. If you don't shake your body every day, you should shake your body every day. It feels really great. Um, we're going to go into the other side. So this time, right leg straight, left foot is in the four, active toes on the left side, hands come behind. If your hands, if your arms and shoulders are feeling really tired, just go for the hip stretch this time. If you want to go for the arm stretch again, do it. Foot comes up for the hip stretch. Pushing this knee away if you want to deepen. If you want to go for the shoulders, bring the bum towards the foot, open the throat. I'm feeling good on the shoulders right now, so I'm just going to go for the hips. I'm going to start to do it here. Listen to your body. You can still take the neck stretch, though. It feels good. Breath. Beautiful. Start to unwind, wiggle the toes out, straighten the legs. A 
other leg come out, let the arms come out. Take that stretch and take the shake. Awesome. Take your block or your book, take your Harry Potter if you have a book instead of a block. Um, my blocks are really hard to the cork, so I'm gonna lay my blanket over the block, but if you have a foam one, you're probably fine. You're gonna make a little castle right here, and we're gonna come on down to our back. Come down with your knees bent, it will feel better. Place the block right under the heart. Head's gonna come down, look up at whatever is or was behind you is now in front of you. Hands come out to the side for cactus arms. <sighs> Feels great. If you guys want to go for a back bend here, more than this we're already doing, let the legs come straight, but if you have tension in your low back, you're not gonna wanna do that. So give it a shot. If you like it, keep it. If you don't, bend the knee. And other option, is to come into an upside down butterfly here. Hands can be overhead for the figure eight stretch. Said to be the most balancing for your energy. That also feels great to stretch out the armpits. Or you can be in cactus, or you can be hand on the heart, hand on the belly, or head resting the figure. Up to you. I'm gonna go for the figure eight right now. <sighs> Melting the neck and shoulders, melting the heart. No pressure in the low spine. If you do in the low back, bend the knees up. Deep breaths here. When you're ready, let the knees come into the chest and roll over to the side. Come out, push yourself up, remove your block, and then come on down again with bent knees onto your back. Knees come into chest, a nice rock back and forth. If you'd like, you can rock up and down the length of the spine like that. Up to you. Take the right knee in, left leg out, toes active. Right knee comes over for a twist, right hand out to the side. Look at the right hand if you want to pull a twist. Left hand on the knee is not pulling it down, just wait here. Look over at that right hand. Relaxing, space on the side body here. Hips coming away from the rib cage. Inhale to bring the knees back in. Take the sleeves or stay there if you'd like. But I'm gonna move on because I gotta wait till my baby too. Right knee comes, right leg comes straight, left knee comes in. Left hand comes out, left knee comes over across the body. I've got block in the way, make sure you've got nothing in the way. Knee comes over, look at this right hand, left hand if you'd like for the full twist. Space on the side body here. <sighs> it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Inhale to come out. If you want, you can pause the video and you can stay here for as long as you want. Just winding you guys down. One more little rock side to side. And then, this is your time. I'm not gonna go with you through Shavasana. You can do that. So if you'd like, before you get into Shavasana, you can take a happy baby, hands on the outsides of the feet or the calves. You can take a half baby 
half hamstring stretch. You can take both sides. You can take feet together for baby Buddha. You can take windshield wiper legs, feet on the ground, knees go side to side. So that feels real nice. You can take locked under the sage grub under your tailbone here for a supported bridge. And you can also do that with your feet open with your knees open. Or you can just come on down. You guys have done awesome. I thank you guys for practicing with me. Melt into your Shavasana. Take this time, I dare you, to pause the video, to not set an alarm, and to just be in your Shavasana, sink into it, and stay there until you come out. There is no one, no instructor, not me, who's gonna say, okay, it's time to get up. Let's clean up our space. It's time to go, class is over. Let yourself really rest and take as long of a rest as your body needs right now. We need to take care of ourselves. I think if anything is evident right now, that's evident. So please come into your Shavasana, take care of yourself, relax and rest and be well. And remember, feel your connection to the earth, feel your connection, your body on the ground, Feel your connection to everyone else around you, even when you don't feel it, 